Hi, I'm Lucas, here on Bardscraft. I like to make good looking miniatures and terrain that are available for everyone. In this video I'm gonna do something just like that. So if you feel inspired or perhaps you learn something in this video, make sure to subscribe. Thanks. I will start by doing the temple from XPS foam. Walls first. I cut out pieces for the walls that have similar measurements as those of the modular castle keep I made a while ago. I made some adjustments as these walls will be a bit thinner. I stacked them up like this and made a cut. With the convenient modularity of the walls, I can change the buildings of the diorama, as there will be stones, trees and bushes in the way. I can't just slap in anything. I will be able to assemble the walls in a similar way that I did for the castle gatehouse. I cut out the rest of the walls before building the foundations for the temple. Then I stopped and thought. Perhaps I should plan a bit. This will be the entrance to the large hall, and an extra room for sacrificial rituals and such. I will place a glowing thing in the rooms, one here and another one there. Light will come out from the doorways and windows. The plan is solid, and I cut out all the wall pieces I need. Look, the cuts are rough and messy, which means that even you can build this thing. Just one more crucial thing before moving on. Remove the factory surface to not look like a peasant. Here I'm demonstrating a drawing cut. As you can see, simply pushing the blade towards the foam does nothing, unless the knife is super sharp and magical. I have used toothpicks in similar builds, but I won't do it here. I trust the PVA glue. While gluing, I made sure that the angles were 90 degrees and that there were no big gaps between the walls. Let's put away the walls and we will make the floors. I cut out pretty thick pieces that are slightly larger than the rooms we just made. As usual, the factory surface needs to be removed. I then cut each floor piece to suitable size. Eyeballing the measurements is good enough when making simple structures like these. Here we can see everything fitting together nicely. Ok, I think it's best to add some light to the temple, before making the details on the floors. An electric tea light needs to be fitted into the floor, so that only the light sticks out. I pressed down the tea light on the foam to get a guideline I can cut along. Let's light a candle and get cozy. It's getting colder and winter is coming. I am now heating a needle. It is used to cut the foam, like this. If you want to be less reckless, use something like this. Great, I got the hole for the tea light. Doesn't matter if it's a bit off. I will cover this later with an altar. Before that, I'll start making the stone floor. When looking at the floor piece, we see that the outside of the wall will work as foundation, while the inside is floor. Out and in needs to be separated with a line just under the wall, as the entire floor foundation piece will not have the same stone pattern. The first step of the floor tiles is to make shallow cuts with a blade. Here in the middle, I form the path from larger tiles and smaller tiles go all around. You can't see much here, so I'll skip to the satisfying part where I use a pencil to enlarge the cuts and grooves I made. This is a really fun part to do. As a matter of fact, simple stone structures and dungeon tiles are among the best beginner-friendly projects. I do hope I manage to inspire you if you are new to the craft. This is looking really good. Using a ball of aluminum foil, I gently worked over the foam, creating light stone textures on the floors. I 
I worked over the outer side using more pressure, as I want the foundation stonework to be more crude. In general, I recommend making stone textures before shaping the tiles. I didn't do that, so I had to rework some of the tiles, where the foam was pressed down in a way that makes the carved grooves less defined. Talking about stonework, the foundations here will be made out of a few large slabs of stone and a quick two-step stair at the entrance. Then let's figure out what to do with the lights. The lights go in like this, and I'll remove the fake flame at this point. For the altar that goes over the light, I cut out a half circle that should fit well with the walls. I made another one, then melted away a hole for the lamp. And, naturally, some quick stone textures. There we go. Now I glued them into place with PVA glue. After painting all of this, I will place a crystal on the light. The idea is that it will spread the light, and also just look beautiful, because crystals, they tend to do that. Back to the walls. I continued by cutting out doorways. Then made strategically placed windows that let out plenty of light from the candles. Cutting with a hot needle can be a bit tricky, but with a lid of patience, trial and error, I managed to get reasonably clean cuts. Once a total of three doorways and four windows were cut out, I quickly made the stone textures on the walls. I just got a great simple idea for the roof. However, this video will make more sense if I finish the walls first. Using cardstock, I will create details around the windows, doors and corners of the walls. I used the opening as a rough reference and cut out pieces that fit around the frames of the windows and doors. I then attached them with a bit of PVA glue. I thought I'd paint these as gold or copper. Hmm, we'll see. Up next, I cut out strips of cardstock and placed them at the corners. Once the corners were done, I made these curved strips that go around some of the doorways. I also placed them here in the corners. In order to get these nice strips that have the same curvature, find something with a suitable radius and use that to trace out a circle. From this, you can now cut out pieces that have the same curvature. Or you can use one perfect piece as template for the rest. This step does take some time, but it will look great. But if you're in a hurry, a plain stone temple will also look good. Enough of that, I wanna make the roofs. I will cut out these foam bits as pillars for the large roof. The roof will rest on these pillars. While gluing them on, I'll explain. The roof will be much easier to make if the one on the large room is positioned above the roofs of the other rooms. You will see it soon. Okay, I made the large roof from four like-sided triangles. Make sure that each piece has the same measurements. Yes, and remember the oats, brother. Up next, I attached the pieces to form the roof. A hot glue gun works well to begin with. First, glue two parts together. After the glue has hardened a bit, you can bend the seam, and then glue the other half of the roof. Once you have both holes ready, attach them one seam at the time. There we go, the roof is a bit larger than the room, good. Now I was able to do the other roofs in a simple way. I bent the rectangular pieces in the middle, they are already almost done. I'll just slap in all of the measurements here. Like or tell me in the comments if you feel more confident when crafting with measurements as guideline. Good, moving along. I glued toothpicks under the roofs, just so they would hold their shape better. I also glued in some excess magnets just to add some weight. More cardstock strips to finish the roofs. Here on the large roof, I covered up the seam nicely with overlapping strips. It's easier to make the strips longer, and then cut away the extra. 
After this I glued on smaller strips for extra detail. The other roofs were much easier to do, just a few strips over from side to side. If I don't come up with more fancy details, the temple of this diorama is ready for painting. Ok, it's time to make the ground and terrain. I like to paint everything in one go, so this is the order I chose to craft. This is how I cut out the large piece of foam for the scenery. With a kitchen knife, good workout. Then I made the stone textures along the edges, while simultaneously refining the shape of the piece. Be sure to check out the cutting tutorial if you are wondering how to cut foam like this. Ok, here I was thinking about the placement of the stones, trees, bushes and some stairs. I started with the stairs. I made them with a quick and simple method. Just a few straight cuts and the stairs are almost done. I cut it evenly on the top, then worked with a pencil to make stones. Smaller and larger stones, no planning. That makes good stone stairs. I also applied textures with the aluminum foil ball. There were some gaps that I decided to fill later with bark shavings. I quickly shaped the scenery further, creating a larger area here. If you suck at kitchen knife cutting, consider making this type of terrain from stacked layers of thinner foam sheets. That was not the prettiest cut, but no worries. I planned to cover the area with flocking later. Before the next step, I used the aluminum foil ball to create textures on some areas that were too flat. The rough work is done and I continued by making smaller rock formations. Pine bark is an excellent material for this. If you can't get any, foam is also good enough. I broke and cut off suitable pieces and made sure that the bottom is flat. This will make gluing a lot easier. Okay, I made an assortment of interesting stones. The massive glue overflow has a purpose. I sprinkled on little bark bits. I got these from cutting bark and I also chopped some up intentionally. I covered this process better in the video where I made a base for a big miniature. But basically, lots of glue, yeah. I also covered the gaps of the stairs. The next morning the glue had dried and I was ready to start painting. A mixture of PVA glue, black acrylic paint and water works well as a base coat for the bark. This black mixture will seal all the tiny pieces in place and offers protection. Use tapping motions with the brush in order to break off less of the tiny bark bits. To get a good coverage, use plenty of paint then make sure to remove the excess. In this way you won't lose any of the textures under a thick layer of paint. I continued by painting the foam stone surfaces with black as well, including the entirety of the temple. As an exception, I painted the inner sides of the roofs with white. I believe this will make the light effects brighter. Continuing with the base coat. Like a savage, I mixed my paint on the piece itself. This is a dark brown and green. It turned into a nice earthy color, good for base painting grassy surfaces. I painted around the bases of the stones with some gentle tapping motions. In this way I got a good transition and the paint job is relatively clean. I felt quite good at this moment. The project starts coming together as we start seeing the results. Ok, the base layers are done. Now I will add flocking. This is Dill. Check out the flocking tutorial if you want to learn more. I'll just show this briefly. PVA glue, then flocking. Some of the rocky parts got unwanted flock. I used a dry paintbrush, gravity and airflow to get it out. I painted the natural stone textures with brown, red, yellow and white. I'll walk you through this quickly so we can move on to the temple.
The stairs were painted with grey as well, a bit lighter, with no orange mixed in. Then the larger stone surfaces were painted in a similar way that I painted the smaller ones, but I toned down the colors a bit. And finally, a light dry brush with a tan. To seal in the flocking, I put diluted PVA glue in a spray bottle and covered the flocking. Half water, half glue. Really simple. At this step, I also added more flocking on poorly covered areas. When the glue had dried, I dry brushed the grass with a dead, faded yellow, mixed from yellow, white and black. After that, I dry brushed with orange and yellow. I just brushed some patches over the grass, without thinking too much. And a sand path goes here. I checked the placement of the temple beforehand, so the path is on the right place. Here, I used ground pepper as sand. Since it's autumn, I added oregano as fallen leaves. The leaves were applied on a few spots, especially at the areas where trees will be placed. Some leaves will fly off in the chilling winds, to simulate autumn. I painted the oregano leaves with different tones of orange, then made the sand path a bit darker with a dark wash. It's a bit dark now, but it will dry. We'll stick in some trees and bushes onto the terrain once the temple is finished. For this project, I wanted more than just regular dungeon floor. Beginning with a tan, I painted the small tiles. I worked gently with the brush, as a full coverage was not desired. Then, a slightly darkened and faded blue to cover the large tiles that form the path through the temple. I will show you all the colors used soon. Moving on to the outer side of the foundation, I lightly painted with the same burnt umber, the brown color also used in the stone formations earlier. Because gold will be used later, I decided to paint a few of the smaller tiles with a golden brown. Yeah, this will look great, I thought. Next, I dry brushed the dark stonework with the tan. By the way, if you're enjoying the content, make sure to subscribe and enable those notifications so that the YouTube algorithm doesn't pull a trick on us. Alright, I then dry brushed the whole piece with a lighter tan. It's almost a white. You can dry brush a bit more in the middle of the blue tiles, where the stones would be most worn. Okay, the bottom of the temple is almost done. I painted the two altars with a dark gold. Then applied dark tone wash. The tea lights were just painted black with a bit of grey as well. While the paint dried, I cut out four triangles from transparent scrap plastic. Then glued them together into a crystal shape. This can be a bit tricky, but if I can do it on camera, you can do it as well. Or instead glue on toy crystals, that should also work. The crystals were then placed on top of the tea lights with PVA glue. I pushed away the floors and moved on to the walls. I dry brushed them with the same greyish tan. I had quite a lot of paint on the brush to get the walls a bit lighter. Just with these two layers of paint, these already look tabletop ready. But that's not enough for us. Next up, a dry brushing with a mixture of yellow and white. I was not quite sure about this, but you gotta try new things once in a while. Okay, at this point I was convinced this is a good idea. Next, painting the decorative strips with blue. I promise, I don't suck this much at painting. Sometimes it's just shaky under the camera. Now comes a daring move. I made a dark wash from water, a drop of detergent and black and brown paint. I coated the entire temple. The wash makes the colors deeper, and it will settle at places such as at the sides of the blue strips, which looks great. While that dries, let's move on to the roof. Gold and copper for the roof. This will make little sense, but it will be glorious. I painted the roof with this gold mixture. The wash will tone it down, so don't worry. Then I painted the strips with blue again. I was as careful as I could be, but sometimes I got a bit of blue on the gold. Then I just used a wet brush to get it off. Okay, I used the same wash on the roof. Don't be afraid to add lots of wash. 
It might look too dark and messy, just give it some time to settle and dry. As a matter of fact, I did around 3 washes per roof. Alright, we'll see how the roof looks later. For the bushes and trees, I ripped and shaped pieces from a dishwashing sponge. I made them roundish and removed most unnatural sharp edges. Then I colored them with various mixtures of green, brown, yellow and red. I recommend using gloves, but this is worth the mess. Look at these beautiful autumn colors. And I like to get messy, so it doesn't bother me. Okay, then I gently dry brushed them with yellow and then glued them on to the terrain. Check out that video to learn how to make these really simple trees. Yeah, this combination of trees, bushes and flocking works well. On a wet and windy autumn night, the warmth of the soothing temple light is enough to cure a weary traveler. I'm quite pleased with the colors, and this is an excellent piece of simple, cheap and modular terrain. Look, this is 99% compatible with the modular castle keep. The floors fit right in here. Hell, even the whole castle. Or then I can do something silly, the epic temple castle tower of doom and fallen leaves. Okay, back to sanity. There's lots of simple techniques and ideas you can draw inspiration from. I hope you learned something useful. If you did, subscribe to my channel and go check out some more like-spirited videos. If you appreciate the craft, consider supporting the channel on Patreon or through the other links you will find in the descriptions below. Great, now go craft some more terrain and minis.